today I'm going to introduce you guys to the Siemens 840D control, a modern control for a modern world. I know throughout my career I've worked with a whole lot of different machines, starting with turret punches, lasers, press brakes, robots, mills, lathes, mill turns, you name it, I've touched it. And this includes different control types like Siemens, Fanuc, Mazatrol, Heidenheim, Cincinnati, all different machines, all that do different things, and a lot of them will have the same control types. Now a lot of the shops that I've been in are always afraid to adopt a new style of control. You know, if you're used to Haas controls, you tend to keep using those because it's what the people on the shop floor know and a lot of shops are stuck way back in the 1980s using Atari style controls but a lot of the modern controls are more like an Xbox so why don't more shops adopt them the reason is is because they're comfortable with the control that they've been using and they're afraid that there's going to be a big adoption time associated with bringing a new control into the shop in order to be efficient in your shop, you have to have a control that's capable of the speeds that you see us running in some of our videos. And Siemens 840D has got to be my favorite control out there. Now, if you're out there running a CNC machine, this video is for you. I'm gonna completely dissect this control and I'm gonna show you guys just how simple an advanced control like this really is. So we're over here on our Heller CP6000 and this thing has the Siemens 840D control. Now, out of all the controls I've ever worked with so far, this one is my favorite and I'm gonna show you guys why. Now, I came in this morning, all I've done so far is throw our power on switch now our machine is in an emergency stop state so we're going to pop our e-stop button out we can see that our door is unlocked so we're going to lock our door we're going to reset the machine and now we're going to push this button right here that energizes our motors it's alive all right now that we have our motors energized we have these two buttons right here on the screen that enable our feed and our spindle so we can actually push those at the same time and then we're going to hit our test stop button, or TS. This tests the brakes on all of our motors. Now we let it sit for a minute, it's going to do some brake tests. And now that that's done, we're going to reference our machine. So we're going to hit reset. You'll see that our ref point button is lit up. So all we have to do is hit cycle start. And as you can see, our axes are starting to move and we're starting to get all of our axes referenced. And now we can see our reference symbol in front of each of our axes. All right, now that we're referenced, let's start taking a look at some of the functions of our machine. So the first thing we're going to do is turn our ref point off by hitting jog again. And now the machine's in a state where we can start doing, you know, MDI functions or we can start doing things like tool changes. So let's take a look at how difficult it is to call a tool into our spindle. So when we're in jog and we're in our machine screen, you'll see this function here called TSM. Now this is tool, spindle, and M codes. So if we hit that button, you see we get this screen here and if we pick a tool we can click inside that field right there we can either hit a tool number or we can select a tool by name out of our magazine so if we hit select tool it'll give us a list of all the tools that we have inside of our magazine now looking at the tools in our magazine this brings us to my first favorite thing about this control i can name my tools whatever i want to so rather than just having T1, T2, T3, all the way up to T200, I have actual names that mean something in each of these fields. So if I'm looking for, say, a 5 flute core 5 end mill, that's how I have it named here in my control, and that's how my tool call is in my program. Rather than say, saying, you know, T4 M6, I'm going to say T equals, and then have the name of my tool, 14 underscore 250 underscore 20 underscore tap. I know just by looking at that tool number, that that's a quarter 20 tap. And to me, that makes a whole lot more sense than just having some tool number that doesn't mean anything stored inside my tool list. So let's say we wanna grab that quarter 20 tap and bring it into our spindle. We're gonna click on it there. We're gonna say, okay. And now you'll see that that's what's inside of our T field on our screen. So if I hit cycle start, our machine's gonna go and get that tool. And there you have it. Our quarter 20 tap is in our spindle, super easy. Now, something else that I love about this machine is that as soon as you call a tool into the spindle, that tool's length offset is automatically active. So you see D1 there, and what that's telling us is that whatever tool's in the spindle, that's what length offset we're using. And the cool thing is, every tool uses D1, unless you get into some of the things where we need several cutting edges for one tool. So no matter what, D1 is active, and that's gonna be the length of the tool that's in the spindle. 
What this does is it eliminates a lot of the problems that you might have by having the wrong length offset accidentally called up in your program, and then you end up with a crash or a broken tool. In addition to calling up our tools on this screen, we can also say turn our spindle on at a certain RPM. So if we go back into that same field, we select a tool that's in the spindle, say OK. Then we can put an RPM in here, say 300 RPM. pick our gear stage, we're going to just say auto, and then our spindle function, which we want to turn clockwise. Now if we just hit cycle start, our spindle is going to fire up at 300 RPM. And there you have it, we're spinning our spindle at 300 RPM. Now any other M functions you want to run are also done in this screen by just selecting other M functions. So say if you wanted to turn the coolant on, you would just type in 8 and then hit cycle start, and boom, there's your M code. Now also on our machine screen, we have measure workpiece and measure tool. Measure workpiece is going to be how we set our work offsets. So the first thing that we do when setting a work offset using our spindle probe is we're going to determine what orientation we want to be probing our part in. Now, before we start probing our part to find our G54-0, say, we need to swivel our head into the orientation that we want to be probing in. So right now you see that our head's in the horizontal orientation, but I want to probe with my head in the vertical orientation. So what I need to do is I need to go into swivel and we're going to swivel our head to minus 180. Now if I hit cycle start, our head's going to go from the horizontal orientation into the vertical orientation and then the machine knows how to do all the calculations to set our work offset. So if we hit cycle start, our head is now going to rotate. Now from here, we're able to go into our measure workpiece functions and you can see all the options that we have for probing something. So say I wanted to set our center of the bore of this part as our zero location, we would just pick bore and then rather than measure only, we're going to tell it to set our work offset. We can put in different offsets here in the X and Y, but if we want it to be zero, we're just going to position our head into the center of that bore and then we're going to hit cycle start. It's going to probe in four locations and it's going to give us the perfect center of that bore. Then it's going to override our work offset so that now the center of that bore is our X and Y zero. So looking at all the icons we have for our different measurement options, we have a single point. So if you're just trying to pick up your X zero location or Y zero, we have a line edge. So if you want to set your rotation to zero and make it parallel with an axis, say you have rectangular corner, same thing, you can pick up your X and Y using that. You have hole, which picks up the center of a bore, and you have a line edge, and then we have picking up a boss. So they're all visually very intuitive. It's very easy to figure out what each function does. Now, in addition to setting our work offsets, we also have measure tool. So if we want to measure a tool, there's a few different ways we can do it, but we're going to use our laser because that's the easiest way. Once we're inside of our laser command, now we, can, we have several different options here for the different types of tool. So let's just set our length on this tap. So all we had to do was hit that one button. Now we're here, we have options for what our RPM should be during measurement and you know different offsets and things, but you can just start right here from this position, hit cycle start, and we'll see our laser pop up and our tool is gonna come in and be measured. Now you'll notice right now, our tool is being measured in the vertical orientation but we're not stuck with that. We can also measure our tool in the horizontal orientation. Now, if we'd prefer to measure our tool in the horizontal orientation, we're gonna go back into our swivel and we're gonna change our C to zero and then swivel our head. Now that the machine knows we're in the horizontal orientation, we can go back in to measure our tool, pick Renishaw, pick our laser, pick tool length, and then we're just gonna hit cycle start again. Now it's gonna measure in the horizontal orientation. So you can see there, there's nothing scary about it. Super easy, super intuitive. It feels more like Windows than it does, you know, using old MS-DOS scripts. So, so far, there's nothing to really be afraid of. Now, if we look at some of our other screens, we have parameter, we have our tool list, our tool wear chart, our tools, what's in our magazine, our work offsets, and our macro variables. 
all super easy, super easy to find. I don't have to go searching in weird places to find things. And every command I have just makes sense. All right, now let's take a look at my next favorite thing about this control, and that's our program manager. Now, if you've worked with some of the more archaic controls, you know how much of a pain it can be to get a program off of a USB drive into your machine. Here, there's none of that crazy F set, F get, F set, P set, P get, execute. I don't even know what that means. Oh my God. Oh. I want to work with this machine like I would work with a normal computer. We're going to go into our program manager and we want to get a program from our USB drive to our NC control. We're going to plug our thumb drive in. Then we're going to go over to our USB drive. Now to get a program over there, all we got to do is pick a program, hit copy, go to our NC control, pick a folder and hit paste. That quick. You see how fast that dynamic program just loaded into this control? No problem. And it did it in seconds. Now another cool thing is if I want to copy multiple programs over, I can go in and mark the files I want to change by just dragging my finger across the programs I want to transfer. And again, I could just do copy, go to where I want to paste them to, and hit paste. Boom, that just loaded three programs that quick. Now, I can name my programs whatever I want. I'm not stuck with O and then a four digit number. I can name it program one, program two, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, one, two, three, four, five, whatever I want. Now, all these little things that save you a little bit of time here and there really add up over the course of the life of a machine. While it may seem like only a minute was saved just now, that's gonna save you hundreds of minutes per year, potentially. So if we go into our program manager and we select the program and open it, we can see what our code looks like here. And if we page down through our program, you'll see some things that you may not understand if you're used to traditional G code. Now you see here we have a cycle 800 and that line is gonna do a lot of different things within that line of code. So it's kind of like a canned cycle. Now you'll notice when I highlight that line, I get this arrow here. So if I arrow over, it takes me into this interface that kind of tells me what each thing is going to do. So we'll see here all different kinds of swivel commands and different retract modes. And by having access to this screen, we can see what that can cycle is actually going to do. Now on this machine, we have two different pallets. So before we can run a program, we have to tie that program to our pallet. So if we go into our pallets menu, we can pick either pallet that we want to modify. In this case, we're going to use the one that's inside the machining area, which is pallet two. And then we can hit edit, pick the program that's tied to that pallet, go into our NC, go find the programs we just loaded and say, use file and save. Now, anytime that pallet comes in, it's going to use that program unless we change it. Now, in addition to how fast this machine just loaded those four programs, the machine control itself is also a lot faster. You know, you may have seen the videos that Titan did recently where he was running 1,650 inches a minute. And the machine was actually hitting that feed rate. Now, how many controls do you know that are capable of running at 2,400 inches a minute in cut? That's faster than most machines' rapids. And machines with the 840D control are able to hit those speeds consistently, which is something that should really blow everybody's minds. Now, another function that we're gonna use quite a bit on this machine is our individual functions. So if I hit our individual functions soft key, then we end up here where we have all of our manual functions listed out pretty nicely and organized. So now, let's say I wanna open our tool change door for some reason. All I have to do is go to that manual function and hold the open button and our tool change door will open. Now, if I want to close it, I just hold close. Super simple, super intuitive. There's other manual functions for pallet change, uh, additional functions. You know, if you want to do these things here, all you got to do is the same thing we just did with the tool change door. Coolant unit, you know, if we don't want to run with coolant, we just turn our wet machining off and then we can run dry if we want to. Now, something else I think is super cool is let's say that you have a drawing that you want your machinist to be able to access from the control. You can upload PDFs, and then we can go into our, say, machine manuals. And then we can go into something like our customer manuals, pick a PDF, and it works just like it does on your cell phone. You can zoom in and out by pinching. You can pick a page. 
and then you just scroll through it and read or look at your drawing or whatever it is that you want to do. Now having access to PDFs is a super cool function that you're not going to find on some of the more archaic control types. Now also up here in our extends we also have a calculator. So I use this thing a lot when I'm trying to remember numbers like say I'm changing a work offset and I want to save things. I can input numbers here and then I have kind of a notepad that I can store things in when I'm working. Now I really want to show you guys something that I thought was super cool the first time I saw it. Let's say that we go into a program and we're hand editing and we accidentally make a typo that the machine won't understand. So let's just say JY789. Now that code doesn't mean anything to this control. Now if I'm in auto mode and I go to run this program, watch what happens. I get an alarm that JY789 doesn't exist or needs to be edited. While I'm inside this program still, I don't have to do anything special. I just modify that code, or in this case, delete it, and hit cycle start again, and now the machine's ready to run. Now, if you've used any other controls before, you'll understand how amazing that just was, because normally, you'll have to do a program restart, let the machine search through all the code, then you'll be able to run the program again. In this case, we were able to change that on the fly while we were still inside the code. Now when we're doing things manually, we're able to use our MDA mode. MDA mode is just basically MDI that you would find on any other machine. You type in the codes that you want to run and hit cycle start and the machine will do it. So I hope this video helped you guys to understand that a new control type isn't scary. In fact, they're super easy to use, super intuitive. They're a lot faster. They're a lot more technologically advanced and they're more like what we're used to seeing on a day-to-day -day basis with our computers, laptops, tablets, and phones. So if your shop is still using archaic technology from back in the 80s, Whoa. you might think about upgrading to some of the newer, better control types out there, like the Siemens 840D. Freaking floppy disk in 2023? Is it like an old Nintendo cartridge? <laughs> yeah, it works that time. Woohoo!